Hello, it's Warren Hewitt. Hope you're doing marvelously well. In this video, we're going to be talking to two friends of ours, Michael and Brad, who have a channel called In The Mix. This is a wonderful channel. These guys create their own music. They have done covers and they also have their own original band called Hybrid Life. They are a wonderful couple of guys. And I discovered them a few months ago because I started watching their videos. I was just randomly searching for different videos and I found fantastic music being made by guys in Scotland. And they are using FL Studio. So this episode is going to be about the basics, the overview, if you like, of FL Studio. Now, why are we talking about this? I'll tell you why I really want to talk about this. Because one of the top video game music guys in the whole world is Mr. Mick Gordon. There will be a link to his video somewhere flying around here. Mick Gordon is an outstanding guitar player. He also writes music for many, many video games. We had a wonderful talk with him last year. Watch the video. Anyway, why am I talking about him? He uses FL Studio. I consider to be at the forefront of making incredible music and making a lot of money being very successful in video games. And he is incredibly talented and he uses, once again, FL Studio. So I wanted to find a couple of guys I could respect that knew it. And Michael and Brad really know what they're doing. Their channel is wonderful and their music is fantastic. They do themselves and it's very, very informative. So if you are an FL Studio user, watch this video, get an overview, check out their channel, give them some support. I hope to do a lot more with them. We're gonna do a competition soon, a mix competition. I'm gonna mix the track and then I'm gonna give you the files and they're gonna judge the winner. I'll give you a full breakdown of what the track is, how I would mix it, and they will judge one of you as the winner and you'll get a really amazing prize. So watch out for that, that's coming up very soon. So in the meantime, watch this great video. Listen to Michael and Brad as they explain the basics of FL Studio. Enjoy. Hey guys, it's Mike here, and today I'm gonna to be showing you the DAW which I use, which is FL Studio 12. In this video, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because I know that that will just take too long and it won't be very interesting, but I'm gonna do three things. One, we'll be loading up a project that we've been working on, and I'm gonna use this to show you how to load instruments, how to arrange a project, and just how to navigate FL Studio in general. The second thing will be loading a multi-track session. Imagine a client has given you a load of stems to mix, you're using FL Studio 12. How can you use FL Studio 12 similar to another DAW like Pro Tools for doing a mix or a master? And the third part of this video will involve my co-producer Brad, where we're gonna record some vocals to show you how easy that is. The sort of music that Brad and I make, which is over on the hybrid channel, spans many genres and we do everything from acoustic guitar, piano, singer, songwriter style songs, but all the way through to EDM songs, which are very synth based and electronic. And FL Studio lets us blend between all these sort of genres very seamlessly. If at any point in this video you get a little bit lost or you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below or contact me personally. All my links will be in the description. Without dragging this out any longer, let's get straight into the interesting stuff. So I've loaded up our original song Sparks because I want to keep things interesting for you. And just as a beginner, all you really need to concern yourself with is how to navigate this software. So you have buttons up at the top here that are controlled by shortcut keys and I'm just going to be using F5 through F9 to trigger these. So you have F5 which is your playlist. This is where your song is composed so all the WAV files you might be dragging in, all the MIDI information that's going to be triggering synths, that's going to be stored within the playlist. F6 will open the channel rack and this is where all of your instruments and WAV files will be stored and I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about this later because this is where things differ a lot from other DAWs. F7 will pull up the piano roll, so this stores all the MIDI information to trigger the synths that are inside your channel rack by pressing F6. And pressing F9 will pull up your mixer, and this is where all your information will be sent, all your sounds, to be, so that you can process them, add effects, mix them down, and they will all be bussed together into the master like any other DAW. I'm going to go back to the channel rack now to show you one of the key differences between FL Studio and almost every other DAW out there. This is where things differ from other DAWs because this is where your instruments are stored, whereas in other DAWs, each track would be bound to a certain instrument and also a mixer insert. So in this case, I'm going to go to the harp here. In the playlist, there's nothing to say what effects are on this, what mixer channel it's being sent to, and indeed whether or not I can only have harp on this channel. All the information that's important is stored in the channel rack. So the instrument itself, its MIDI information and where it gets sent on the mixer is all stored here. 
So you can flick between the different instruments you have. And they're all available on the channel rack for you to play, but to actually insert sounds into your song, what you need to do is create a new pattern. I've just pressed F4 to create a new pattern. There's so many shortcut keys with FL Studio and they're all really easy to use and I've actually got another video just on shortcut keys because they're really essential to my workflow. In this case, I'm just gonna call it harp. I'm gonna give it a color just to keep it organized. And I can drop this pattern anywhere onto the playlist. Just to keep things simple, I'm gonna put it into the harp section and it doesn't have any MIDI information yet. If I press play, nothing's happening. So what I need to do is inside the pattern, I go onto the instrument, I select the piano roll, and you can see that I have the ability to paint in any notes that I want. I can resize these notes, I can drag them up and down, I can take all the notes together, pitch them up and down, and then that information is now has now been put into that pattern and I can move this pattern wherever I like on the playlist. Although it might seem odd that you have this much flexibility, I'm gonna show you a way in which this flexibility can be used very effectively. So in this case, I'm gonna show you a section of the song where the harp comes in fairly abruptly. But what I would like to do is fade in this harp. So this note, I want to reverse it and play it into the start. And I'm gonna show you how easy this is. So just going to the mixer for a second, and I press F9 to pull that up. You can see this is where I've sent all of my instruments and all of my sounds. So the harp is being sent to number nine. You can see at the bottom that there's a small display to show which effects you have. And there's loads of options for changing the view of this mixer to customize it. FL Studio is incredibly customizable. You can really make it look the way you want. So what I'm gonna do is add a recorder onto this. I'm just gonna use the inbuilt recorder inside FL Studio. I'm gonna tell it to record on input and press play. And you can see that it's recording out this note. Then I'm gonna simply drag and drop this into the playlist. And this is where things get really interesting. I can drop this anywhere that I want. So in this case, I'm gonna drag it into the harp section. I'm going to double tap to select it. I'm gonna rename it. I'm just gonna call it Rev. I'm gonna reverse it just by pressing one button there and I'm gonna add a crossfade. And then I'm gonna blend this seamlessly into the start of the MIDI information. So on one track, what we have is a wave file leading into MIDI information. And I'm going to send this wave file to a new track. I can send it wherever. I could send it to my sub, I could send it to the harp, or I could send it to a new channel. In this case, I'm going to send it to a new one called Harp Rev that I've prepared. And playing these together allows your music to become more expressive because you can see that it's just got a little bit more of an introduction. Sparks of these sparks. It just rises a little bit more. Another standout feature of FL Studio is how easy it is to automate things. You can automate absolutely any parameter, either in the stock plugins, any of these faders here, pan dials, stereo separation dials, but also anything in any third party plugins. So what I'm gonna do is automate a reverb wet level for the harp. So I'm just gonna insert a new track. I'm just gonna press I to insert a new track. I'm going to group it with the above track by pressing G. I'm gonna name it and color it. And then on the mixer insert for the harp, I'm gonna go over to the effects slots and I'm gonna insert Fruity Reverb 2. It's just the stock reverb from FL Studio. This wet dial is the one that I'm gonna be automating. You simply right click and select create automation clip. And you can see that the wet level for the reverb has been added into this um, channel that I've just created now. Using these automation clips really couldn't be easier. You can just right click to create a new point and you can change these points to whatever you'd like. There's strange wave functions. There's also hold points for incredibly accurate shelving like this, but I just tend to use the smooth points. And all I'm going to do is draw in this so that the reverb gradually increases and then decreases towards the end of the pattern. You can see and hear the effect just here. At the very end of this song, we have this section of vocal chants I'm just gonna zoom in on these and expand them. And the workflow here where you're not tied to one track only containing one type of information 
pretty much allowed this entire section to happen. We could pretty much paint anything wherever we wanted to and add all sorts of effects to it. It's cool. It's cool. fluid workflow and allowed us to add all sorts of pitch shifting effects very easily. So in this section here, we could simply select one, make it unique, drag it and drop it underneath. We didn't have to create a new tra a track and then you can very, very easily just pitch something down just like that to create the effect that you want. You can see there's one pitched down, one pitched up. And because we didn't have to worry about where we placed these, we could simply drag and drop any of these wherever we wanted to, move them all about together, move them up, down, side to side, all the rest of it. We had absolutely unlimited freedom to create this chant section the way we wanted to. And I don't think it would have been as easy in almost any other DAW. So hopefully you can see how easy it is to create patterns, add notes to those patterns, and also work, work with automation inside FL Studio. Now on to part two of this video. So imagine a client has sent you a multi-track for a song and you need to mix or master it for them and send it back to them. How might you do this inside FL Studio? So this process really couldn't be any more simple. After you've loaded the software and it'll look like this, you simply have to select the tempo you need by just dragging and dropping here or typing in the tempo you need. I'm just gonna choose 120. Then all you have to do is navigate to the folder on your computer where the files have been saved. In this case, I'm calling it Spark Stems. I'm just gonna select all of them and drag and drop them onto the playlist. Immediately, all of the stems in the song have been loaded and pulled into the playlist. We just need to do a few more things. You can see that if you press play, of what the, dark left the song does play, but nothing is sent to a mixer insert yet. So, to fix this, there's a few things we're gonna do. The first thing is select the step sequencer or channel rack. Then we're gonna select all the channels by holding control and pressing this button here until all of them are green. We go back to the mixer and then in just a few keystrokes, everything is set up for you. Press control, alt and L on the master fader. Selects all of them, pull them down a few dB just to give yourself some headroom. And then all you have to do is press control and L and every single track has just been sent to a unique place on the mixer, just like that. I was still Cold and, and they're all named. Organizing this project couldn't be easier. To name all of these, you simply select the track by right clicking and you press A and it will name all of the tracks just with the same name that the WAV file was loaded with. If you want to change this, say I wanted to change drop synth to, I don't know, wub synth or something like that, you just type it in. I can also give it a new color. I'm gonna make it blue. Then I can simply change the color of this as well call that web synth, we're all ready to go. The same is true for the mixer, you can rename and color all of these however you like, all sorts of possibilities, and that is pretty much a multi-track loaded up just like that. So just playing the song out a little bit. Sparks could light fire in me. Obviously at this point, you'd want to be adding effects to it and changing the volumes. So you might want to insert some channels and then start automating things. So you can automate a fader, for instance, create an automation clip. I'm gonna do one for the drop synth here. Now I have an automation clip so that I can automate the volume of this in the drop here. Adding effects to start your mixing and mastering process couldn't be easier. You simply select the channel it's sent to. In this case, I'm gonna choose the guitar and I'm gonna to go to the effects slots. They'll either be on the left or right, depending on how FL Studio is configured. And you have all of FL Studio's inbuilt mixing and mastering plugins and any others you have yourself. So for instance, I'm gonna load up Fruity's inbuilt parametric EQ and you can start shaping sounds. You can add compressors. You can add anything and everything you'd normally use to mix your songs, just like that. Once you've finished a mixing session, it's incredibly easy to bounce out an entire multi-track session. You simply go to Export, WAV File. I'm just gonna find somewhere to put it. In this case, I'm gonna put it in my backups folder. I'm gonna call it Sparks. You can choose the export settings, bitrate, resampling quality, and you just select Split Mixer Tracks. <clears throat> and if you export that, then it will export 
stereo wave files for every single channel in the mixer. So you could easily send that to someone else for further mixing and mastering. So now on to part three of this video where we're gonna be taking one of our old songs and putting some vocals on it. And by old songs, I mean our oldest song. This was the first song that Brad and I ever made with FL Studio. It's actually the first uh, piece of music we ever produced. This was started on an old laptop. It was then shared onto a drive and then downloaded onto this computer and nothing has corrupted, which shows that FL Studio is pretty stable and it's working for us pretty well. And all we're going to do is show you how you can put vocals onto this track. So it's a multi-track session. There's no MIDI information. It's just WAV files. And I'm going to insert uh, a track that I can record vocals onto. So at the top, I'm just going to right click and press I to insert a new track. And I'm going to name it Vocals. I'm going to give it a color of blue so it's easy to stay on top of. Then on my mixer, I'm going to just press F9 to pull the mixer up just like earlier. On any insert that I want to record something onto, I'm going to rename it recording and I'm going to make it red. I'm going to turn the channel off and select my microphone. In this case, I'm using, I'm using analog one as my input. I'm also going to go into insert three and call it verse and make it blue and I'm gonna go into insert four and call it chorus. These inserts don't have any instruments running through them. These are just the ones that I'm going to send the vocals to later. So we're almost set up to record. The last thing we have to do is go into the effects in the recording chain and choose the Edison. This is FL Studio's inbuilt audio recorder. So I'm gonna select on play and then I'm gonna press record. And what this will do is that if I select a part of the song to continuously loop around, this will make a loop point in the recording so that it's very easy to drop and drag the recording in later. So I'm just going to pass you over to Brad in the vocal booth and we're going to start recording these vocals. Colors cold, water soft and old. When you have the recording, all you have to do is press one button and it lines it up for you in the playlist. <sighs> You're nowhere near. I think that's okay, yeah. In the playlist, you can see where the vocals have been dropped in. So by double clicking on one, you can send it to a new channel. So in this case, I'm going to send the first one to track three on the mixer. I'm just doing the same thing for the chorus, but I'm sending it to channel four this time. By double clicking on it, you can select a crossfade mode. Now we can hear the vocal with the track. <laughs> Cold, water soft and old. And the chorus. <sighs> and we're ready to start adding effects to vocals as you normally would. This is very simple. You simply select where the vocals have been sent to. I've added a gain unit just to increase the volume a little bit. But you can add EQs. You can either use the inbuilt EQs and start shaping the vocals as you normally would, or you can use your own personal VSTs. It's easy to add compressors, reverbs, and anything else that you'd normally do. So I'm just gonna put some effects on these and then show you the final outcome. Colors cold, water soft and old. The final result. Colors cold. Water soft and old So you can see that the vocal recording process was really easy, it was very quick, and we don't have any cluttered vocal takes or uh, any um, unorganized playlist happening. It's just all easy, simple, and clean. So those are just a few of the things that FL Studio is capable of. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if there was anything that was unclear, please do not hesitate to ask either myself or Warren in the comments down below, and I hope to see you in another video very soon. I'm going to maybe turn it up a dB and a half. I don't want to bring up the kick reverb necessarily. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Maybe it only wants to come up half a dB, and then I'm adjusting the sends going into the, into the return of the verb. It gets really complicated. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with the snare, and we're going to listen and audition the kicks.